I knew a woman, a woman that I know well, who um, was pregnant and her time was coming near. Her mother-in-law had flown in from across the country and there were others gathered who were excited about the birth, but the baby wasn't coming. The due date had come and passed and the mother was beginning to feel anxious. All these people were in town. They're going to be having to leave soon. They bought return tickets on certain dates, and the baby still wasn't here. So she's feeling this pressure. But of course, there was nothing much that she could do about it. She was just waiting till when the, whenever the baby was going to come, whenever that time was going to appear. She didn't quite know. She started feeling a little bit anxious. She was looking forward to that joyful moment, but feeling a bit of anxiety. You know, in our first reading today from Isaiah, chapter 35, we have this beautiful picture of the desert coming to life. It's the return, it's the picture of the return of our Lord, that joyous time when the sick will be healed and we'll experience the resurrection, all these amazing things. But the problem is, it's not here yet. How do you experience joyfully this time of waiting. It's really hard to be joyful when you're waiting for something of which you don't know when it's going to come. And the stresses of life begin to build. In our culture, we have lots of people that don't like waiting at all. And so they fill their, this time with lots of consumerism and, and buying things. We have a time a culture that we're not very good with waiting. We can get easy answers instantly. We can buy things at the click of a button that'll be on your doorstep the next day or maybe even that day, depending on where you live. Instant movies. So this whole notion of waiting and how to do it well is not something that's common. Yet this is what we're called to here in Advent. We are waiting and preparing for the way of the Lord, waiting for that time when he will return that joyful time. And today is traditionally known as Gaudaute Sunday or Rejoice Sunday. So it begs the question, how do you wait joyfully? How do you not give in to the anxiety and the pressures of this of our world as you're awaiting this unknown day of the Lord's return? The church gives us a beautiful reading today from St. James, James chapter 5, about how to do this joyfully, how to prepare joyfully, how to move through this time of waiting well. St. James uses the picture of a farmer to help us with this. He says that we should wait like, like a farmer who cultivates his field. Think about how a farmer waits. He doesn't do, have a lot of anxiety he simply trusts that these seeds that he's planted, they will come up. He doesn't dig them up and check on them. He doesn't get frustrated with this piece of land because it's taken so long for those seeds to pop up and go and try another piece of land. No. He trusts that all these things are going to take place at the right time. His heart is at peace. He's, he has this joy, this trust that, that this process is going to take place as it's supposed to. So St. James says, to cultivate your heart like a farmer who cultivates the land. And the first way to cultivate your heart, that he says, is to not grumble against one another. People who are waiting can get irritated very easily. We see this in hospitals especially. So in hospitals, there's a lot of waiting. And these people in hospitals, you know, they don't know when the doctor's going to be there, when the results are going to come. While they got this illness, are they going to be able to get over it or they're not? Can they get fixed? Can they not? All these unknowns. And I've met a large number of grumpy people at the hospital. It's easy to get grumpy. So this is the first step. To cultivating your heart, according to James, patiently awaiting the Lord's return, is don't give in to this grumpiness. Instead, he says, number two, you know, to cultivate your heart, uh, in preparation for, for the Lord. To do this, a great way to do this, we see this especially in our gospel reading today, in John the Baptist, is encountering the Lord daily in your life. Don't just wait until the very end when he's going to return. 
but allow him to return daily, to encounter you daily, to change you daily, right here, right now. You know, the joy of the gospel fills the hearts and lives of all those who encounter him. I love what Pope Francis writes in the, his exhortation on the joy of the gospel. He says, those who accept his offer, meaning Christ's offer of salvation, are set free from sin, sorrow, inner emptiness, and loneliness. With Christ, joy is constantly born anew. You know, John the Baptist, his life was based on this encounter and helping others encounter him. His first encounter with Christ was in the womb. John the Baptist was in the womb and his, his mother, you know, Elizabeth, was there being visited by the Blessed Mother who in her womb had the Lord. And as soon as the Lord, even while he was still in the womb, came into the house, the scripture says that John the Baptist, inside the, while still inside the womb, leapt with joy. This is a joy that would never leave him, that would pervade his life. He would spend his life telling people, behold the Lamb of God. This is the one that's to come. He's the one that's going to come and baptize you with fire. His whole life was, was transformed because of his encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. So get to know him. Get to know our Lord. Encounter him daily. You could maybe even take a little book of the Gospels and read it. Maybe you could read the daily Mass readings in the morning. Allow those readings to warm your heart in some way and take one of these things that you've, that the, the, some touch the Lord has given to you through those readings, meditate on it, think about it throughout the day. Allow the Lord to continue encountering you and continue to warm your, warm your heart, continue to bring this joy. However, don't stop there. Cultivate, continue to cultivate that joy by sharing Christ with others. Share him in little, humble ways, simple ways. Like the ways that John the Baptist exemplified. We heard about in our gospel reading today. Our Lord pointed to him as a great example. He said, you know, who did you go out into the desert to see? Did you just see a, go out to see a man dressed in fine raiment and, and beautiful fine clothes? No, right? He was dressed in uncomfortable, cheapo clothes, camel's hair, prickly clothes. Yet, even by the clothes that he wore, he was proclaiming Christ. It's easy in our consumeristic world to buy lots of stuff and find your satisfaction in stuff. But following this example of John the Baptist, I would encourage you to live as simply as you can to live as sparingly as possible so you can be as sharing as possible. This points to the Lord. You know, our John the Baptist, his, what he was all about is, I must become less, he must become more. And he showed this in the way that he lived. He showed it in his clothes even, in his possessions. But also in his words. Think about his words, how, he, how John the Baptist used his words. People would come up to him and ask him who he was. He was this amazing, amazing man. He had this huge ministry, yet in his words, he always replied simply. He always replied in a way that decreased himself and increased Christ. His huge ministry, it was far larger than Christ's ministry during their lifetimes. Later on, during when the apostles were going out on their mission work, they kept stumbling upon disciples of John the Baptist, way over in Asia Minor even. There'd be people like, oh yeah, We've been baptized by John, but we don't know about Jesus. Tell us about Jesus. Over and over again. His ministry, John the Baptist's ministry, stretched far and wide. It was huge. And people were coming up to him asking, hey, are you, are you the Messiah? Are you the, 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 the great prophet who's to come? He could have been like, yeah, I am. And people would have believed him. They would have followed him. He had this very successful, very large ministry. But day in, day out, in little ways, through his clothes, through his words. He humbled himself. He cultivated this, this humility, this joyful humility in his heart, pointing people to Christ and not to himself. He would say, you know, I'm just the voice of one calling in the wilderness. He's like, I'm not even the person. I'm not the person. I'm just a voice. I'm just like this, this vehicle, this, this tool. That's all that I am. Cultivating day in, day out, this joyful humility, pointing others to Christ. 
even to the point of self-sacrifice, that there he was in, in prison, he was sending his followers, who were probably hesitant to leave him, to Christ. He was saying to them, go and find out about this man. Find out who he is. Is that because John the Baptist didn't know who Christ was? No, of course he knew who Christ was. He'd been preaching about him his whole life, getting people ready for him his whole life. But he wanted his followers, his own disciples, to discover who he was. He wanted them to go and be Christ's disciples. He had this, he wanted them to encounter Christ, to encounter this true joy. So he's pointing them. Beautiful little ways of cultivating humility, of pointing others to Christ through little things, clothes, and through the words that he said, through his relationships, pointing people to Christ, cultivating that joyful heart in little humble ways. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. Again, that farmer image, that patient cultivation, day in, day out. Your words, your clothes, your possessions, how you talk to other people, encouraging them to encounter joy, that joy that is only found in Christ. So during the rush of this season, when for many people, because of all the stresses, God's voice is no longer heard, the quiet joy of his love no longer felt, when people cease to do good, remember the farmer? Remember this way of patiently cultivating joy in your heart. Instead of grumbling, lots to grumble about. You know, people grumble about the Pope and the president and the traffic and the runners and uh, the weather and work and all different sorts of things. Don't give in to that temptation. Instead, turn to Christ. Encounter him. And we're halfway through Advent now. How are you doing with that? How are you doing allowing the Lord to warm your heart, encountering him each day? Maybe this is time to renew your commitment of being prepared, of preparing your heart for his coming. Encounter him. Let him encounter you. And then share him with others. Through the simple way that you live, your life, your possessions, your relationships, your reputation, point others to Christ. This, in, in, in little ways, each day, like a farmer who cultivates the land. This is how to experience joy during the waiting, by cultivating your heart day in, day out, that God may be glorified. Amen.